My name is Eric Reinkert, and I'm a floral designer for money from 9 to 5. I, I believe that flower arranging as an art it follows basic design concepts that every media of art follows. It doesn't matter if it's film, music, art, yada, yada, yada. Um, but I also believe those design principles applied to daily life will improve the quality of your life. If you're living a, a balanced life, but not symmetrical, it's, you're going to create some interest in your life, you know, if you have peaks and valleys. But you can't have all jagged, craggy, angry textures in your life, and you can't have all flat, static, um, very still images in your life. It's got to be a rolling transition. You can't, you can't have cliffs. Well, you can, but it just makes your life uncomfortable. Being a florist has changed my life and has helped with some of the problems I've faced in life. Um, sometimes you have clients that you've had for a number of years and they'll send arrangements to their wives and also they'll send arrangements to their mistresses. Um, and this is something that is part of the industry and you, you know this person is a schmuck and, and you know they're cheating on their, uh, their significant other, they're causing this rift in their life, it's gonna end up bad, there's no way they can get around it but I'm still forced to do the best, most beautiful job I can. A good florist has to have an eye for color, balance, basic design concepts, um, but it has to be a person willing to, uh, to have some compassion for other people. I mean, there's no way you're going to make a sensitive arrangement if, if you don't care about what who you're sending the product out to, you know, and what the situation is. I mean, I go home from work and I'm devastated sometimes uh, because of what I've had to do that day. And all I've had to do is make beautiful things. It's kind of a contradiction, but it's, it's true. I mean, I make these beautiful, beautiful flowers to try to ease somebody's pain, you know, or heighten somebody's joy. And that's, that's what makes me a good florist, is that I care. Um, I've had this... I don't know, kind of a gift. Uh, and it's, I'll, I'll make art, usually drawings, so, you know, when I was younger. Uh, and then I'd meet someone and I'd say to myself, this drawing is for you. And I'd be right. You know, I'd give it to them and they'd speak to them in a way that I, you know, really had no business knowing. And with flowers, what I found is that it's the perfect medium for this gift because I can look at the arrangement, see the name of the person, where they live, why they're getting the arrangement, and I get this sense of what it is they want. And more often than not, when I talk to someone I've given flowers to, they say, this is just exactly what I needed. I often make arrangements for myself. I, uh, I generally use the flowers that are left over from weekly accounts that we like, get back in the shop and they're not sellable anymore. I think a lot of, there's a lot of joy in flowers watching them die uh, because it's a, it's a it's the continuation of their cycle. They grow off the plant, they bloom, uh, they get pollinated, they spread some seeds, they wilt, and they fall back to the ground. And, and this whole wilting process can be quite beautiful. Uh, there's certain kinds of French tulips, they, they bloom beautifully and they hold for a while, and as they die, people throw them away. Well, what happens is, as these petals come down, they, they twist and they contort into these really fascinating uh, almost fractal images and then they fall off one by one they never all fall at the same time and it's left with this very interesting geometric structural stock that you really didn't notice before because the petals were there and they're beautiful but this stock and the construction of it the natural design is really quite striking and you'd never know that unless you watched the second half of the life of these flowers it, if i had to describe a flower to someone who had never seen or felt one the first thing I would like to do is just let them touch the flower because you can get a lot of the uh, the feeling and the uh, the texture of the flower by touching it. You know, rose petals, they look very soft and supple, and they are. And when you touch them, you, <coughs> you might not know that it's a red rose, um, but you would get the rose, the impression of the rose. You know, I think without flowers and without beauty, that they represent, our lives would be, you know, mechanical black box wastelands and it would just, you know, there'd be no point in going on. A flower is basically sex. Um, it's, 
its entire function is uh, to attract bodies to it to pollinate and reproduce its species. Um, and so for me, it's just, it's, it's the most natural physical representation of intimate passion that nature can provide. It's over the millions of years, it's been, you know, through, uh, through competition and evolution, these sex organs have just become more and more inflated and uh, dramatic and beautiful. And I am extraordinarily attracted to that.